<laughs> Thanks, God. How many of you guys are left over from the prophetic conference? Let me see you. Come on, let's go. So good. There is a mighty pole on heaven tonight. You guys here. Thanks for being here. So good. Powerful. You know, you guys are the uh, you guys are the awesome ones. You're here. It's it's sunny outside. It's what is it? 70 degrees outside, and you're inside. So God bless you guys. That's just awesome. Shh, I got a testimony to share. Shh. I know it's so exciting, but to lose my mind, I'm at church. I know it's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> we sent a team down to Marysville uh, last week or so. About 60 BSSM students went down there, and as many of you guys are in this room. And uh, they went down there. We're preparing a crusade that's going to be happening next weekend down there. And um, 60 students go down there. They train the church in evangelism. They go hit the streets. In one day, 30 people made a commitment to Christ in one day. It was awesome. It was awesome. But to me, here's what's even more exciting. There was a youth group that went out with the, with the BSSM students. The next day, they were so fired up from what they saw that the next day they went to Walmart and they led 13 more people to Christ by themselves. <laughs> I don't think anybody had a chance with ravenous teenagers that have seen the power of God moving through their hearts and lives. How many of you guys know it's a season of harvest? Amen. God is, is pouring out his spirit all over the world. I'm still just losing my mind over the testimonies of, uh, there was a Muslim imam that, that died. Oh, I'm just going to share it just because for fun. How's that sound? Yeah. We're about to go into worship, man. We're worshiping an amazing God. He's alive. He's awesome. The devil's completely defeated. Jesus is alive. There is no rival to God. <laughs> There is no rival. God has no rival. But a Muslim imam had passed away up in the Nigeria area. And a man who had been saved for maybe a couple of months had received training that he was to go out, lay hands on people, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, do the things that Jesus told him to do. And he made friendship with this Muslim imam and when the imam passed away, he goes to the funeral. And at the funeral, he said, I want to pray for my friend to be raised from the dead. And of course, that didn't really go over that well. People got pretty mad at him. Until somebody said, wait, they were friends. And, and the imam would want him to pray for him because they were friends, honoring friendship. So he walks over to the man, puts his hand on the casket, begins to declare life. And the man not only, he'd been dead for two days. Two days. This testimony only happened just about two, right around two months ago. He rises from the, he, he, he sits up out of the coffin. And then he goes, you got to get this. He said, we've been wrong the whole time. I saw Jesus at the end of the tunnel. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Amen. You know, Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1, it says, pray for rain in the time of latter rain. How many of you guys know it's raining in the heavens? We're living under an open heavens. We get to come before Christ with unveiled faces. The veil has been removed. Jesus has risen from the grave, taking away the veil. We get to approach him boldly, amen, boldly in worship tonight. It's going to be miracles, signs and wonders. People are going to be healed as we worship tonight because this kingdom is just here. Amen. So good. How many guys are expecting for a great night? Come on. We're, our faith is in a great God. So why don't you turn around, greet somebody, and just tell them, 
You better get ready. It's going to be a good one.
Good evening, Bethel Church. Can we just lift up some praise for Jesus? Just tell Him you love Him. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, you're here tonight because of Jesus. We're gathered together because of Jesus. Amen. Wow. Wow. Just turn to someone beside you and just tell them it's going to be a good night. Just, just love them. Oh, you're probably wondering why have we finished that worship early? Well, we're actually going to continue in worship in a minute. But tonight is Baptism Sunday. Amen. You can see the baptism pool right here. We've just spent the last sort of hour going through the Scriptures, going through the Bible, going through the Word, praying for those that are being baptized tonight, going through what it means to be baptized. Why do I get baptized? Why did Jesus tell us to get baptized? And we've just been in that place with the Lord. And I have an incredible group of new friends I've just made tonight who are going to get baptized. So wherever you are, if you can sit down, unless you're being baptized. If you're being baptized, I want you to come up here on the stage, line up. And if you sit down, if you're able to down the front, and if you're online, you get to enjoy this online. Our new brothers and sisters being baptized, and I'm going to invite them to come up on stage in a minute. Thank you, God. And we're going to celebrate wildly. What does it mean to be baptized? It means to make an outward public decision and demonstration of our faith for God for an inward decision to be in intimacy with Him. It means to make a decision to follow Christ, to lay down every idol, every other thing we trust, every place, position, thought, power that's enthroned itself above Christ must surrender and come down and Christ becomes our Saviour, our Lord, our King. We follow Him, we lay our lives down. It means to go under the water with Him, right? Raise your hand if you've been baptised, water baptised. Look around, guys. Isn't that incredible? Amen. It means to go down under the water to be purified, to repent of our sins, to turn 180 degrees back to Christ, to be redeemed by His blood, the cross that He purchased for us, and to be folded into Him. Someone's excited. Amen. Say hello, guys. Someone's excited. So in a minute, you're going to hear testimonies of why these guys are being baptized. Hi. <laughs> we have a cheerleader right here, guys. You're going to hear testimonies from each person individually of why they're being baptized and what it means. And I want you guys to celebrate wildly, okay? Because we're a house of honor and a house of celebration. And then you're gonna see individually every person come up the stairs into the baptism pool and go under the waters. And as they leave their old life behind, okay, washed anew, leaving their sin behind, and they're gonna come up resurrected in the power and authority of Christ. And I believe baptized in the Holy Spirit, amen? It says in Acts 2.38, turn away from every other thing you trust. I want you to say everything I trust. That's every thought, every idol, every way, every direction that's not of Him, you'll turn away. And it says, trust and save yourself and turn to Jesus and follow Him. I wanna say follow Him. Follow him. Amen, that's every area of your life. Repent and be baptized. So I want you guys to come up. You can come up, line up along the stage. Guys, give them a celebration cheer. You've got some fans. And I'm going to ask you guys individually your name and why you're being baptized. Yeah, I'm Daniel. Um, God grabbed a hold of me. Uh, he grabbed me. I, I grew up in the church, and I was raised in the church, and, and I just saw a lot of pain in the church. And so about 
10 years ago, I left the church and I wanted nothing to do with God. I just pushed him aside and I went out and lived in the world. And for the last six years, I've been addicted to alcohol and drugs and I've just been, been going down a worldly path and I got sober. Um, <laughs> done, done in there. <laughs> Uh, I got sober and I told, I, I got sober for a, a year and 11 months. And I told my, my rehab group, I was like, the day that I pick up alcohol is the day that I die. And again, and I picked up alcohol February 8th, um, just two weeks ago. And I got asked to work. <laughs> I got... I got, I got asked to work, uh, to bartend at a bar that I've never bartended at, and with friends that, I, that, that weren't my support group. And they, and they asked me right when I got there, I was like, do they want a shot? And I just jumped right back into it. And I was like, yeah. And I started drinking. I drank Friday night. I drank Saturday night. And after I got off work Saturday night, I go to a house where I used to live. And I just told the guys, I was like, I just need friends right now. And I grabbed a bottle of tequila and I started drinking. And I got drunk and I blacked out. And right before I blacked out, I grabbed one of my friends and I pulled him into the closet and I was like, guys, I don't know what's going on, but God has a hold of me right now. God is grabbing me and he's grabbing me. And we stayed in that closet for, I don't know how long, 45 minutes to an hour. And, and right after that, I called two of my other friends and I called my phone. I'm like, I have two Christian friends that go to church in Austin. I'm from Austin, Texas. And they go, they go to church and... Uh, oh, <laughs> they told me to keep this to 30 seconds, but. Uh, Tell them what, what did God do? What did God do? And coming out of my blackout, I was in the back of Bethel, Austin. And they started praying for me. And worship finishes, they take me into another room and they just start praying deliverance over me. And God is just touching me this whole time. Yep. And I go home Sunday night go to bed, wake up Monday, and God gave me a vision. He gave me a vision of the number eight. He gave me a vision of trees and a burning bush. And God said, and God showed me that the number eight was a new beginning, a, co a covenant that he's making with me. And the trees were, were Redding, California. And that I was to come to Redding. And the burning bush was God's Holy Spirit just burning on fire for California, burning on fire for this nation. As we, as we grow in this, you're going to see God move. And God's moving in a big way. And it's starting here. And so God brought me here. God brought me to move here to, to Redding, to Redding, to move here, to be connected to this church. Thank you. And that's why you're being baptized that's tonight. I'm being baptized. Thank you, Daniel. Give it up for Daniel. Amen. Amen. Now, not everyone's going to get to share the testimony in full. But guys, these guys are burning. Amen. This is real. This is real. Your name and why you're being baptized. Um, my name is Anna. And <laughs> um, Jesus is the love of my life. So I'm doing this tonight to express my full commitment to him. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you, Anna. I'm Judah, <laughs> and I'm getting baptized because I feel like I'm entering a new season, and I want all that God has for me, and I want to submit and surrender to all that he has for me. Amazing. I can feel the presence. Amen. Put your hands out and receive. He is here. Your name and why you're being baptized. Hi, I'm Sarah, and... Um, <laughs> Um, I'm being baptized again because I just didn't understand like the supernatural implications of what happened the last time I was baptized. But also, I just want my heart to be like sealed to Jesus's heart, like no separation between his heart and my heart. Um, so I'm just rededicating myself to him. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Your name and why you're being baptized. Hi, my name's at Cole. Uh, the, the reason why I want to be baptized again is because I really love Jesus and I'm the first generation of my family as a Christian. And also I was baptized in a home church, but it's so good to just share the public face of myself. And really I just got encounters that God just say, put me into a deep, deep water. And when I float up to that water, I just feel God's overwhelming love. So I want to just die to myself and surrender my life to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. 
beautiful. Hi. Your name and why you're being baptized. Hi, my name is Katya, and uh, <laughs> I gave my life uh, 43 years ago to Jesus, but I think I didn't really know what I was doing then. And um, for me, it's really that I really I want to live in Him, in Him only. And this is the reason I want to get baptized. And it's very special to have it here at Bethel because I received so much from your online ministry. And I'm so thankful for your hunger and for the possibility to, yeah, to be part of your house. Thank you. We have a son of the house right here. Your name and why you're being baptized. My name is Aiden. And um, yeah, for a long time, my faith has been very internal, very personal, and um, so I wanted to take tonight to make a public, permanent uh, declaration of my personal faith in Jesus. Well said. Thank you, Aiden. Hello again. Your name and why you're being baptized. My name is Duke, and I was baptized in a Catholic church when I was a month old. I'm 62 years old, and two years ago, the Lord decided to shift me completely out of the life I was living. He brought me to a place that I didn't know existed, to a city and a church that I didn't know it existed. He gave me prophetic words that I had no idea what they were going to mean in my life when he brought me to this place. And at the last baptism, at the last baptism Sunday, the Lord came to me and said, I want you to come and be baptized the next Thanks. baptism Sunday because I... I need you to get baptized so, I, so that he can activate his covenant with his people upon my life. And so, Amen. So in obedience to the Lord, here I am, and he will, he will take my life and do whatever he wants to with it. Amen. Thank you. Your name and why you're being baptized. Um, my name is Dean. I was... <laughs> Uh, I was baptized as a child, um, wasn't really, you know, as firm of a decision that I made myself, so today I'm making that decision myself, and I'm uh, getting baptized to leave my old life behind and increase my connection with God. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Hello again. Your name and why you're being baptized. Uh, my name's Joseph. And... Um, I this has been a long time coming. I've, I've been struggling down the road and listening to Bill and you guys all. It just keeps bringing me closer. This is the place I want to be baptized and stop holding out and give God everything. So. Thank you. Great answer. Oh, you're special. Come down here, honey. Your name and why you're being baptized. Um, my name's Robin. And... <laughs> Um, and I'm believing that I'm going to receive healing today as I go in the waters and come out. And um, even if I don't, this is my surrender. Like, whatever he asks, I'm in. Yeah. Amen. And you love Jesus, hey? Yeah. How yeah, much? I do. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> Amen. Can I just have everyone just stand up? We're going to go back into a time of worship and... There's a holiness and a fear of God in the room. And, but before we do, I just, I want to ask if there's anybody in the room and you've heard these testimonies of baptism and these testimonies of surrender and coming into the fullness of God and you would like to be baptized. Maybe you've never been baptized and you've wanted to, or maybe you feel just the conviction of the Lord and you say, you know, Sammy, that's for me. It, it's my time. I want to go under the waters tonight. I, I need to come right with him. I need to repent and be baptized. I want to let you know that we have an incredible team over here. They have extra t-shirts, extra towels. We prepare and make space for this. That we would absolutely love the honor and the privilege to pray with you, to lead you through that repentance prayer, to cover you and to baptize you in water and the Holy Spirit tonight. So if that's you, I just encourage you, please make your way to the side of the stage. We can, we'll ask you a few questions and we'll go through, through the scriptures with you and would love that privilege and honor. So right now, around the place, would you just lift your hands up? And as we go into worship,
Would you put his name? Jesus, this is for you. Just start crying out to him. Unto you, for you, because of you, through you, from you, and to you. Just lift up his name, church. Cry out to him and glorify the King of Kings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
is one on the throne Jesus holy and he is worthy of praise honor and glory there is one on the throne Jesus 
one holy matchless in every only one righteous the only one true matchless in everywhere matchless in every way the perfect son of god perfect son of god Spotless land, perfect in every way, matchless in every way, every single way, every single way. Oh, would you just lift a worship tonight? Lift your worship tonight. Tell him he's matchless, tell him he's worthy, tell him he's perfect. That's who you are, my Lord. In all of your ways, completely perfect, Lord. Oh, no one else is like you, Lord. You are worthy like this, Lord. Worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, worthy, worthy. Pour out your worship on him right now. Who is like you, Lord? Who compares to your beauty, your splendor, your majesty? Who is found like you in the heavens of the earth? Who compares to you, Jesus? Oh, I just feel tonight there's this cry in the hearts of each one of us, this theme that's been sung over and over and over again about this King who reigns above it all. This matchless one, this one that's high and exalted and lifted above every other name, every other idol, every other God. And and I just feel here in the house of God tonight that this matchless King of Kings and Lord of Lords wants to remind us that this is not a fair fight. This is not a fair fight. (laughs) I think sometimes as believers, we get stuck in this lie where we somehow think that this is 50-50, Jesus versus Satan. (laughs) And we're like in this fight where we think that this disempowered devil wants to be re-empowered by our belief systems. And I'm here to tell you that tonight, remind you again tonight, that not only (laughs) 
Would Jesus be able to wipe this devil off the face of the earth with a breath? He takes that which He created, which is you and me. He breathed into the dust and we were made. And He says that the sole of your feet will crush Satan. This is not a fair fight. This is not a fair fight. I kept seeing the picture of a black room. Can you imagine, do you remember being in a, in a room where there is no light? And how it would be easy to think that the only thing that exists is darkness. But all it takes is a match to show us how much more powerful light is than darkness. And I began to imagine a dark tomb. Black, no light. <laughs> Seemingly, this devil has landed the final blow. Here is the King of kings and the Lord of lords in the tomb, dead. Seemingly, all hope is lost. I don't know where you find yourself tonight. I honestly believe the Lord's about to set has lost once and for all. Some of you walked into church tonight and you're like, no, this is an unfair fight. The devil is actually beating me. No, I'm here to tell you that that's a lie from the pit of hell. He has been defeated. Wow. I see some of you being oppressed in, in your dreams. Some of you being oppressed at night. And some of you are stuck in anxiety and depression, even mental illness. I, I, I believe some of you have been stuck in these cycles and the Lord wants to set you free tonight. If that's you, just quickly, you say, Ben, that's me. I, I've been underneath this cloud of oppression. The enemy's been playing havoc with me and I'm done with it. I need to be set free tonight. Just lift your hand up. Yeah, there's hands up all over the place. If you're watching online, I believe this is for you too. The Lord wants to meet you right now and He wants to set you free. Church, you know what to do. If you're around these people, just gather around them. And I want to remind you, wow, that you are the delegated authority. All authority has been given to you. So I want you from that place of authority that Jesus gave to you to pray in authority and victory and just command that assignment to end quickly. Just pray. Pray out loud. That's it, just a bit longer, just keep praying. Keep praying. Thirty more seconds, keep praying. Some of you praying right now, you have a gift of faith coming on you. Just partner with that. Come into your God-given place of authority and watch Satan come under your feet. That's it. That's it. Jesus, we acknowledge you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We acknowledge you as the one who has come to destroy the powers of darkness. Jesus, I thank you for your sons and daughters right now. I thank you for the assignment, not of hell, but the assignment of heaven over each one of their lives. And we take our place and we command this assignment to end now. In Jesus' Name, oppression stop. Yeah. Night terrors end. Depression, anxiety, leave now in the Name of Jesus. I'm asking for waves and waves and waves of Your love right now. You say the perfect love casts out fear. So right now, would You release wave after wave after wave of perfect love over Your sons and daughters in Jesus' Name. Woo! Just quickly, if you're around them, just pray in the Spirit for 30 seconds. 
Sechere Bese Karamase to Saraba Liarama Sundra Mosho Karamara de Siana Besia Bla Sola Bala Harba Tierra Matoya Shikrati Liaramoso Toramaso Etere de Sherebia Marama Sola Malin. That's it. It's a little bit longer. Shetere Bese Terebiara Masor Matea Mata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you are receiving prayer, can you wave at me if you feel a difference? If you felt oppression lift off of you or leave you, can you wave at me? Just West, yes, 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 hands everywhere. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We ask that tonight you would realign our thoughts with yours. Pick up our eyes to see. Make us aware of that seat that we have next to you in heavenly places. Give us eyes to see who you are, what you've done, what access you've given us. Jesus, thank You for light that drives out darkness. Thank You for the Holy Spirit that is far stronger than any demon in hell. So Jesus, we as Your kids, we just receive everything You've purchased for us tonight. We lift up our hands as little children. We say, thank You, Father. We receive the gift of Your love, Your kindness, your victory, that which we could never earn on our best day. We receive it in Jesus' Name. And everyone who agrees with me say, I receive it in the Name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Isn't He wonderful? He's so wonderful. Wow. Can we show our love and appreciation really quick for this incredible worship team? We love you guys. Thank you so, so much. And can we take an extra moment to thank our special guest, Eniola, who we love so much. We love you. Thanks for coming tonight. We love you so dearly. You guys can make your way back to your seats. We love you. And as we do that, we're going to watch church news together. Hi, Bethel family. You've had us for four weeks in a row. This is our final one, but we're glad to see you. Hey, you can never get too much of a good thing. We've had fun being with you. Here's this week's church news. We have an exciting conference coming up. Our Dream Life School of Interpretation from March 13th through the 15th. I know that this is Ben's baby. Oh yeah, it's one of my favorites. Hey, we spend a third of our life asleep. And by the time you're 60 years old, you'll have slept 20 years of your life. That means dreams and the night season is so important and God loves them. And it's one of the languages of God that we need to be trained in, in the gift of interpretation. Yeah. You can get your tickets available at Bethel.com slash events. Bethel Church, if you'd like to learn about how our government was actually designed to partner with the Word of the Lord, we want to invite you to come and join us Tuesday night for our Biblical Civics Equip class. This is from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. You can register now at Bethel.com slash equip. Coming to us in April is our annual Wonder Women's Conference. Come on. I look forward to this conference every year. I think watching so many women diverse and in their gifting, in their calling, come together, yes. bring strength to one another and go after God. It's a time of refreshing. It's a time of impartation. It's a time of fresh vision. And we want to invite you ladies from all over the world to come and join us. Save the date and get your tickets now while they're available at Bethel.com slash events. You'll want to be there. Young Saints Camp is back 2024. This summer, we're gonna have an incredible time. Send your kids for a week filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, where they will encounter God in fresh new ways. Hey, get your early bird prices right now. Go to youngsaints.com slash camp. Bethel Church, it's been a pleasure being with you. We hope you have an incredible week. 
If you missed any of these announcements, you can find them where, Ben? At Bethel.com slash church news. Yay, that was awesome. Guys, it's offering time. Let's all stand for a moment. Um, I was just asking my pastors what was going on in the school this week. I, I lead our Portuguese school of ministry. And it's, it's been so fun to see all that the Lord is doing. And this week, it was interesting. We got so many financial breakthroughs in the school. And what was interesting about it was students kept getting donations from places they were not expecting to get. And even yesterday, my mom, my sweet mom, she's going on her first mission trip this summer. And she posted about it. And in just a few hours, she got so many donations. But the interesting thing was the first donation she got was from someone who's not even a Christian. And they were like, I'm just going to sow into, into this woman what the Lord is doing. And I just kept thinking about last Sunday and that woman that the whole church came together and started sewing into her and she got such a big financial break for that night and I really do feel like something was released that night over our church body over our schools and and I saw us tonight as we're coming tonight for our offerings I saw us sowing seeds at the, at the floor and the Lord brought me to Matthew 13 and as we were throwing one little seed it became five seeds and the Lord kept multiplying our seeds tonight. And he kept telling me, Paula, the size of the seed doesn't mean the fruit is going to be small. It's going to be big. And I actually feel like tonight you're going to bring your offerings and your tithes. But I actually feel like this week the Lord is going to put some people in your hearts that you're supposed to sow into their lives. And don't despise the size of your seed. Don't think it has to be a huge offering. It has to be a small offering. Just do whatever the Lord is telling you to do. Because there's a special anointing right now over our house for seed to be multiplied. Amen. Yeah. Let's just do offering reading number one. Then I'm going to pray for our offerings today. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money that's paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just pray tonight for every seed to be multiplied. I just pray even, even this week, Lord, for you to be putting people in our hearts that we're supposed to sow into their lives, into their callings, into what you're calling them to do. We bless this church. We bless, in Jesus' name, bless the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, guys, just remember, if you, this is not your local church, your ties belong to your local church, but anything above that, come and give. And we rush the buckets on Sunday night, so you can come. The worship team is going to lead us.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Well, we're so excited here tonight. Go ahead and have a seat. We're just going to take a few moments. We love on our Sunday nights to welcome our guests. And we love to see God absolutely wreck people through his word. Amen. Before, sorry, I, I can't hear. I haven't been out of here for seven days because of a cold. So I'm just settling in. But uh, when I was watching the baptisms tonight, I don't know about you, but I got hit with res- Restore to me the joy of my salvation, Lord. How many of you had that burning in your heart like, oh God, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that you took me out of darkness and you gave me resurrection life, amen? And so I just wanna take a moment and I want you to just receive the joy of your salvation, that there be a fresh baptism of the simplicity that you and I are saved that we would never lose the wonder that he called our name. He called our name, amen? Well, we wanna welcome you tonight. If this is your first time visiting, why don't you go ahead and stand? We're not gonna embarrass you in any way, but if you are maybe visiting from the prophetic conference or you're just visiting for the first time, we wanna honor our guests. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Keep standing, because we're gonna, we're gonna actually minister to those who are visiting tonight. So if you're visiting tonight, go ahead and stand. Amazing. Well, I felt like if you're standing, you can remain standing, you can put your hand up. If you are in the worship team or in worship community, uh, if you're visiting, you wanna keep your hand raised. So we have over here, over there. I just felt like, um, actually, I just had a word for worship leaders. So it was really odd, I couldn't shake it. Um, and I, I actually, if, if that's you, can you just keep your hand up for just a little bit longer? Thank you, amazing, so amazing. I really believe that in this season, and why don't you actually extend your hands to uh, the worship leaders in this house. I, I actually really believe that God is gonna mark you guys prophetically to bring prophetic worship back into your churches. So God, I thank you, God, for birthing a new sound through the people that have their hand raised as they go home. Holy Spirit, I ask that you fall afresh, God, that you bring a new sound of worship, God, back into the heart of the people, Lord. And I thank you for songwriters in this place, God. I ask that you would continue to move afresh, God, that you would write songs for this next generation. And I actually believe this section over here, that God is actually going to Gonna, there's a couple of you that are songwriters in this front seat, in this front section, and I actually believe God is actually going to use you to birth songs for this next generation. So Holy Spirit, I thank you, God, for what you're doing over them, what you're doing over this next generation, and I thank you that you're raising up, God, a priest, God, that are going to give an offering back to you, Lord, that you're commissioning them, God, to go back into their homes and to bring these beautiful offering of incense and of adoration, Lord, to you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hello, stay standing. Uh, there's a guy there, you have a blue cap. You did stand and then you, you sat down right there. Yeah, what's your name, man? Say it again. Michael. Uh, so, so Michael, actually, like, I saw the spirit of worship on you. And I don't know if you're a musician or not, but I really feel like you're going to lead people. Like, you might not be musical, but I feel like you still have an ability to lead people into worship, like, actually into the throne room of heaven. And I saw in the next uh, four months, God's going to shift your language, actually your fruit. Like, I saw him changing your fruit from apples into bananas in this next season. And uh, bananas carry potassium, and they're really good for, like, if you, I play sports to eat bananas. I don't need to stretch, you know, just uh, help out my muscles. But I feel like God's going to take some things that have been tense in your life. So just hear what I'm saying. Some things that have been tense in the life and spiritually put potassium in them. And he's actually going to start to loosen them up in the next four months, particularly around your mind and how you think. And like, he's going to renew your mind, uh, particularly even around relationships. Like, I feel like there's been a couple of really bad relationships in the last four months, but God's going to renew those things very, 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 uh, uh, particularly with a leader. There's been like a leader, like I see a church leader and God's going to renew that relationship. I just see four months. I don't know why I keep us see four months, but he's going to radically renew that relationship in the next four months. And this is a bit of a random one, but if you have a tattoo of a 
I want to, the bird is, I don't think it's a honeysuckle, I think it's a hummingbird. If you don't, that's fine, that's not a problem. If anyone has a, bird, a tattoo of a hummingbird, wait, who's that? What's your name, ma'am? Danielle. Okay, Daniel and Danielle. All right, that's awesome. Uh, God, so I just, um, this is what I saw. So I keep on referring to a hummingbird as a honeysucker. And I know it's not the right thing. It's, 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 it's the wrong thing, but this is what I had. When I came up here, God said, there's gonna be someone who has a tattoo of a hummingbird, but I want you to tell, and I actually knew it was gonna be a woman, that she's a honeysucker, that, she, that there's a gift on your life to suck out the honey from the Lord. But honey is actually, it's a, it's a, it's a, healing, it's a healing product. Like if you eat honey, if you go to a local area and you eat that honey, you actually, your body gets the immune system, like good immune system. And there's actually an anointing of healing on your hands. So just put your hands like this. I'm just gonna pray for you so, God, I just bless Danielle in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the gift of healing on this woman. I, f- I even feel like God's gonna heal your body as a sign and a wonder to the things that are on your life. We just bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So good. So if you are part of our Bethel family, extend your hands to these beautiful guests we have tonight. And I want you to pray dangerous prayers that tonight they would encounter the living God. <laughs> And that they'd be so rocked with his love that they would go back with a burning fire in their soul, never the same. And that their life would touch the life of their land they're from. And there would be an ignition of fire in their land in Jesus' name. Just go ahead, church. Just bless our our guests tonight. Increase, 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 God. More of your fire, more of your life, God. Thank you for divine encounters with you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you that you satisfy the hungry with good things. So Lord, you would satisfy the hungry tonight. Satisfy the hungry tonight with good things. Thank you, God. Thank you for your children tonight, Jesus. Satisfy them, bless them. Bethel family, can we just welcome and bless our visitors? Just thank them for coming tonight. So good. Thanks, God. And before I do this, I just want to honor Vince from Awakening Europe. Vince he is a worship leader from Awakening Europe. He is rocking that land. We're so proud of you. The whole Awakening, all the, all, I mean, there's a whole group of you from, from Germany and from Europe. And so I just want to honor Vince for the way that he, he absolutely is a man of purity. And when he sings and when he leads, the presence of God is ushered in in an incredible way for your generation. So I just honor you, Vince, and what you're carrying in this hour. We love you and we need you. Okay, so, I know, I love that kid so much. Oh, more God. Whatever's happening over there, we just say yes. We just say yes, God. Well, tonight you are absolutely in for a treat. We have... The one, the only, the father of our house, the father of our movement. Will you guys please honor and welcome Bill as he comes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you too. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. My goodness, there's a lot of train wrecks in this room. Wow. (laughs) She asked for something that comes in a little box and goes around her finger. So I got her a box of (laughs) Band-Aids. It's just bad. There's another one where a guy says, my wife kept leaving jewelry magazines open all around the house. So I got her a magazine rack. (laughs) 
I tried donating blood today. Never again. So many questions. Whose blood is this? Where did you get it? Why is it in a bucket? <laughs> Sorry, that's... That's... Uh, apparently, I haven't had the mic in a while, so I'm... I'm uh, Make it up for it. If you're fasting and still gossiping, go ahead and eat. <laughs> Research shows that laughing for two minutes is just as healthy as a 20 minute jog. So now I'm sitting in the park laughing at all the joggers. <laughs> The Bible mentions vegetables 13 times, mentions meat 290 times. I'm on the biblical diet. If your wife says she will be ready in five minutes, she will be. There's no need to remind her every 15 minutes. How strong do you like your coffee? I want it to show up on a drug test. <laughs> one more, one more. Then we'll, we'll get serious. This morning I accidentally changed the GPS voice to mail. Now it just says, it's around here somewhere. Keep driving. <laughs> oh, I, I'm going to need this tonight. All right, all right. <clears throat> um, we're going to... Uh, I had a sense earlier that there's, uh, there's several women in the room that have um, ongoing problems because of either pregnancy and or delivery of a child. And the Lord's going to heal and restore. Yes. So if that's you, just put a hand up so I can see how many there are. If that's you, just put a hand up. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, there's, there's a few here. Yep, yeah, okay. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strange thing, but I, I've seen through the years uh, quite a few that broke the actual tailbone in, uh, I believe it was in delivery, and, uh, and Jesus heals those so commonly um, that uh, it's just become ex expected. There's also some, uh, some folks here, male or female, and there's only two kinds. <laughs> Nobody gets to vote on this one. Yeah. Um, it's the lower part of the back, right? I would say probably right in this area, a little bit above the, the, uh, the belt line, all the way to the tailbone. There's a whole section there of ongoing issues. Who is that that has uh, pro problems in that area? Okay, we've got several. Okay, all right. Um, there's also... Is there someone here that has a problem with the, the inner ear something to do with the bone of, of the inner ear. Either it's missing or it's damaged or something. Is that you? Is there, is there more? Yeah, right, right here, right, right here. Yeah, yeah, well, this, tonight's your night. Good, okay. All right, we've seen, we've seen the Lord heal this before. Um, well, all these things, we've seen him heal before. Um, there's also somebody that has an issue at the, right at the base of the skull, the top of the neck. There's a problem. Uh, there's a problem there. I don't know if it's a degenerative condition. Oh goodness, we got like six. Or, yeah, that's amazing. Whenever I see that many in a group, it doesn't mean nobody else gets healed. It just means it's a it's it's an unusual coincidence, which is the language of the spirit. So you'll see unusual things stand out to you, and they're just supposed to get your attention. And uh, so put your hands up again here, right right here. There's like one, two, three four, five, six, seven in a, just a small section. Isn't that unusual? Uh, the rest of you, sorry, you missed out. You, if you would have followed the Lord, you would have sat over here. If, no. Third, third grade sense of humor, sorry. Um, so the Lord's going to uh, bring healing to that. So all of you that raise your hand for any of these things, go ahead and stand up. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Um, let's let's add something uh, to this. Anybody who has any kind of a joint disease, 
It could be arthritic condition. It could be uh, some kind of a degenerative thing. Anyone who has any, in any joint in your body, if that's you, stand up right now. Stand up quickly. Yeah, and there's specifically, there's somebody with that right hip. Is that you? All right, all right. That right, right in the right, right in the hip joint there, that socket. There's a healing happening right there. So Lord, we just invite you to come. We thank you that you're here, but demonstrate, Holy Spirit, demonstrate the wonder, the loveliness, the beauty of Jesus by touching these people's bodies right now in Jesus' name. We declare the healing grace of Jesus over you. The healing grace of Jesus. Church, just extend, I'm going to have you actually lay hands on them in a moment, but right now just extend your hand towards them and just begin to pray. Just declare the healing word over them. Uh, I believe the Lord is going to reset uh, bones that didn't heal correctly. If, if you broke a bone, I don't care if it's 50 years ago, um, if you broke a bone ever and it didn't heal correctly or maybe it's not healed now, I want you to stand up too. Uh, just do that quickly. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Just increase that healing grace. Now, all of you that are standing, check yourself out right now uh, before we actually lay hands on you and pray. Check yourself out. And if you're at least 80% better already, then I want you to wave both hands like this over your head and we'll just solve it. Isn't that wonderful? Come on. Wave your hands over your head like that. Yeah. Check yourself out. Don't wait to feel heat or tingling or anything. Don't, don't wait to do that because only half the people that we see heal actually feel it happen. So check yourself out for another, about 15 seconds. Just keep moving it around. Yeah. Just a simple, simple act of faith. Jesus sent a blind man to the pool of Siloam and, and it was in the going. And uh, sometimes there's an action involved. So, all right. You, you got, you're pretty, you're completely healed. How long has it been there? A year and a half, last weekend, she wasn't able to get out of bed because of the pain in the back. And uh, Jesus just healed her tonight. So it's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Here's, here's what I'm going to do. Um, any, anybody else uh, at least 80% better already before we lay hands on you? Wave your hand at me so I can see who you are. Like there's another one in the back there, another one here. Another one. Okay, we've got about five or six. All right. Now, all of you that are standing, put a hand up. And uh, leave it there till someone comes to you. Those of you that are sitting, you just got drafted. You got drafted into the military, into the army of God. I want you to go to them, find out where the problem is, pray a very simple prayer, and command, speak, declare the healing word. <clears throat> you can put your hand down when somebody comes to you. Yeah, those who are online, we just declare the same healing grace over you. Let bones be reset now in Jesus' name. We declare healing over that hip joint in the name of the Lord Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. Now speak to the condition. Speak to the condition. Command the bone to be reset. Um, arthritis to leave the joints. Whatever it might be, just speak to the condition. We declare in the name of Jesus, he sent his word and healed him. He sent his word and healed him. <clears throat> so we declare that over your bodies right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, you got about 10 more seconds. Then we're going to check it out again. Thanks, Lord. Wonderful. All right, go ahead and end your prayer. End your prayer, but stay with them. Don't leave them, please. Shh. All of you that receive prayer, please examine yourself at least 10 or 15 seconds, examine yourself. And anyone who is at least 80% better, wave both hands over your head like this so we can see who you are. Yep.
We got some more over here. Over here is another, another one there. Thank you. Another one here, there. Beautiful. Another one there. Uh, excellent. Several more over here. Wonderful. All right. One last time. Turn and pray again. One last time. Jesus prayed for a blind man twice before he could see clearly. So we declare that over you in Jesus' name. Full restoration. Thank you, God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All of you that are receiving prayer, why don't you just confess, Lord Jesus, I receive your gift of healing for me. I receive your gift of healing. Jesus became a curse that we would not have to bear the curse. So we received that. Okay, everyone who received prayer, check yourself out again. Uh, those who are online, uh, put it in the chat box or something uh, as uh, Jesus heals your body. Check yourself out again. How many of you were healed this last time we prayed? At least, at least 80% wave both hands over your head like this so we can see who you are. Wonderful, we got quite a few more. So beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you, Lord. All right, go ahead and take your places. Go ahead and find your seats if you would. I believe more and more, more and more, we're going to see people actually healed, delivered, and born again at the most awkward times of a meeting, actually in, in the teaching. Um, I, I feel like we're supposed to uh, build some sort of an expectation. Zero hype, just declaring this is what he does. And uh, we've, I've seen this for years, that when something is declared at the beginning of a meeting, it's much more likely to happen. Not because we're making something happen, but because we pick up on the heart of the Lord and we declare. Nothing happens in the kingdom until first there's a declaration. So I just, I just want to say that when, uh, uh, as the word is taught, I'm, I'm hoping I, this is my expectation. I, I believe it's supposed to be that whenever the word of ta is taught, that people are actually healed. Because there is a connection between the word of God and healing. It says he sent his word and healed them. Psalms 107 verse 20. And uh, so I'm, I'm expecting that uh, even tonight. You have permission at any moment to get healed. It's, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, how many of you, uh, just stand up if the Lord just healed your body in the last, this uh, little 10 minute thing we just did. Stand up, just stand up where you are. Look around the room. Isn't that wonderful? My goodness. It's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. Thank you. Uh, how, how many of you, you had uh, like a, Anybody have like a, bo uh, a bone that once broke that either didn't heal correctly, didn't heal at all, or reset? How, how many of you had, had that happen? My goodness, two back over here, right here, yeah? That's amazing. Yeah, what, what happened? You, you know what, let's, let's get a microphone going here. This is, this is worth, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get uh, two or three of you anyway. Um, just... Uh, Yes, yeah, so when I was a kid, um, my rib broke over here, and when it healed, it got calcified, and this big lump came over it. Yeah. It, it's down like a good 60%, like, yeah. from what it was. Yeah. But it's, like, led to all sorts of, like, restrictions okay. and 
So, yep. So yep. It's, it's was there any pain involved in that thing or? As, as people were praying, I could literally feel it moving. That's like, awesome. It was so cool. <laughs> that works. Like, <laughs> like, you could feel it moving. Yeah, that's amazing. Phenomenal. That's amazing. Yeah. So good. So good. Anyone else, uh, Jesus did something for you tonight? You'd, you'd love to just boast in the Lord. Right back over there is a... Ben, I'm just going to make you run all over this room. Yeah. What, what did Jesus do for you? Yeah, he'll he'll hold the mic. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. I uh, I hurt my back about 30 years ago, and it never healed correctly. Wow! And tonight, when they started to pray, the pain instantly went, and I felt this. I, I felt the vertebrae just kind of going back in order. Wow! You know? Wow! And so like, like all the range, the range of motion is back. I won't That's be able to play cool. basketball, but you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm just curious about the bones that got reset. What what part of your body? Yeah, right there. Yeah, your your arm. Your yeah. Um, thanks, Ben. Just run, run, Ben, run. <laughs> so tell tell us what happened. Well, um, I broke my arm when I was 16 years old, uh, both of the bones in the arm. And the result of it was that it grew back together, but I couldn't hold my hands like this and relax. Wow. It, it would, if I would relax, it will go like that. Yep. And now I can just relax and do this. <laughs> That's so wonderful. Oh. Thank you, Lord. I, I love that. I love that. Did you feel anything happen? Did you hear a pop or feel anything move? No, I, I felt it like uh, a burning. A burning, yeah. Hot is good. Hot is good. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Good. Any, anyone on this side of the room so I can have Ben run? Okay, right over here, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> Run, Ben, run. Sounds like a children's book. Right over there, right there, right there, right there, right there. It's a new, it's a new children's book series, Run, Ben, Run. Yeah. What did Jesus do for you? Um, I had broken these fingers when I was a kid, and they, the top part of them had healed at a 45-degree angle. Like, they just had never set right. And literally felt like pain and shaking. And I looked down and they completely straightened out. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Come on. That's awesome. That is so cool. <laughs> like at a 45 degree angle, they were, and now they're straight. Isn't that beautiful? All right, let's, we can do another one. One more. Is there one more right over here? Yeah. All right. All right. Oh, we have, okay, two more. We'll do this one here and this one here. All right, all right. Go ahead. Yeah, um, so from the age of like 8 to 14, I skateboarded a lot, and I fell on my butt a lot of times. So yeah. my tailbone, over that years, my tailbone like curled and then went sideways to a 45-degree angle. And while people were praying for me, I felt it like literally straighten out and then go to like the time it was supposed to like. <laughs> That's be. awesome. So, did it yeah. did it hurt? I, I mean, normally when you sat for a while, did it yeah, hurt? Or, it would yeah, it hurt a lot. When yeah. I sat for a while. It yeah. felt like something like someone okay, was. Okay, sit on hard right now. Check it out. <laughs> sit on hard. Do it again. How is it? Doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> <laughs> one more, run, one more, right, right here, Jeez. <laughs> run, Ben, run. Hi. In 2001, they discovered I had tumors in my pelvis, and so they removed my sacrum, my ilium, ilium and part of my sacroiliac joint, and they just stuffed me with donor bone, and so I don't like rotate on one side. And so as these guys were praying, I just like picked my knee up, turned it out. And, I mean, 
Oh, you, this is something. I mean, I wouldn't know until I have an x-ray, but this is a rotation that I could not do. That's amazing. Come on. <laughs> that's beautiful. Let's give a shout of thanks to the Lord. Come on. We bless you, God. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Lord. Mm. Wonderful Jesus. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, it's also pretty cool that some of you don't know you're healed yet, and you'll, you'll find out in the morning. And those are fun, too. Make sure, you, just make sure you tell someone. Just make sure you tell someone. Now, how many of you gave God praise? You gave him glory because of these stories you just heard. You, you actually gave him a gift. Yeah. Had they not shared their testimony, you never would have been able to give them that gift. It was their willingness to share what God had done that liberated something in you to bring him a gift you couldn't have given him otherwise. It's the, it's the power of your story. Keep it clear, simple, honest, but let's give glory to Jesus. So that's, that's one. All right. Um, I have a really long teaching. Yeah. Yeah. You're not supposed to react like that. You, you, usually somebody gets up and says, I'm going to keep it short, and then they don't. I'm just telling you ahead of time. I'm going to try to keep it short, shorter than normal. But uh, I, I've got a, a huge subject and, uh, that I've talked about about a month ago, and I don't remember. I think it was Sunday morning. I don't remember. Sometime with this group, and you may not have been here, but I talked, it was actually on one of our missions a week, so I talked about power and authority. And what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to address what I've already addressed briefly and then go off into an area that I, I think is, is uh, pretty important, pretty critical for us. In Luke chapter 9, first part of the chapter, we find that Jesus brings his disciples together and the Bible says he gave them power and authority to heal the sick. Luke chapter 9, we studied it years ago. Maybe we'll do it again sometime soon. But it's a very fun chapter on where the Lord empowers, if I could use a more modern term, he, he deputizes 12 guys to go to six different cities in pairs. And they go and they actually do the same things that they had been watching Jesus do. He commissioned them to step into his assignment and heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, devils cleanse the lepers, all, all the same stuff. And so in this chapter, he gave them power and authority. It's important that you remember those two terms because they are critical for us today. He gave them power and authority and they went out and they did exploits. It's kind of the funny part of the story is when they came back, they were arguing as to who was the greatest. So apparently God used them so powerfully, it boosted their ego. And uh, the Lord is not afraid of doing that because he has a great pruning instrument <laughs> to prune egos. Uh, he does it well. Uh, but he would rather have have you experience something in him and then have him whittle it back down to its place of strength than to have you theorize everything and think you have to become perfect before he'll trust you. He empowers. And so he does so with power and authority. Fast forward. When, when Jesus died, he rose again. He reappeared several times over 40 days to his disciples. And he would talk to them about the kingdom. Acts chapter one tells us some of the subject matter. A road to Emmaus, some of these various stories give us some glimpses, some details of what was on his heart. So he would, he would visit the guys again and he'd visit, he, he met, uh, he was visibly seen by at least 500 people um, in, in after his resurrection. And so he would come and he would talk to them about their assignment. And very specifically, in Matthew 28, the passage that we call the Great Commission, he stands before the 11 remaining 
And he says, all authority has been given to me, therefore go and disciple nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all that I've taught you. Just a little reminder. Jesus taught them to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, cleanse lepers. That was a part of his instruction for them. That was always to be a part of the Great Commission, to go and bring converts, but in getting those converts, disciple them to do what you've been trained to do that Jesus trained you to do. And that cycle was never to have been broken. The illustration that I I use... um, uh, a number of times through the years, is that I, I remember I remember hearing a pastor uh, so many years ago uh, telling us um, that when he they were doing a building project, he just wanted to be involved in the building, and so he would uh, he would come to the contractors every evening and say, "Is there anything I can do?" And he didn't have any building skills, but finally the contractor had mercy on him one day and and said, "Yeah," he says, "We need." These, I'm just going to give you, I forget the exact number and size, but I'll just give it to, to illustrate it. He says, we need 100 two by fours cut to eight foot in length. And uh, so he was excited. He finally got to do something. So everybody left. They went home and he's there with his saw and he's cutting 100 two by fours at eight foot length. So he takes his tape measure out. He measures eight feet. He he marks it, he cuts the eight foot, he puts his tape measure away and takes the eight foot board, puts it on top of the next board, marks it and cuts it and then takes the newly cut board, puts it on top of the next board, marks it and cuts it. And he does this for a hundred boards. Well, every board is about an eighth of an inch longer than the previous one, which is not a problem if you're cutting three or four boards. But when you've cut 100, you end up with some boards that are nine feet long <laughs> at the end of the, of, the, of the deal and some that are like eight feet long. So what happens is in church life, we tend to compare ourselves with previous generations with only an eighth inch difference. And at the end of it all, 2,000 years, we'll find out that we're way different than the original. The original standard is the life of Jesus. He's the eight foot tape measure. Not your favorite Christian. Use your, use your favorite Christian for inspiration. Model Follow examples, all of that, learn all you can. But the original standard is is Jesus. So Jesus then comes to the disciples and he commissions them. And he says, all authority is being given to me, therefore go and disciple nations. Now here's an important thing. Discipling nations has everything in the world to do with the gift of authority that God has given. He says, all authority has been given to me, therefore go. In other words, I've been commissioned by the Father to come destroy the works of the enemy. In fact, I need to say it this way. Jesus came with authority. I don't believe he came with power. As God, he has all the power, you know, as God. But he chose to live restricted in his earthly life as a human dependent on the Father. It's important for us to get that because in doing so, he gave an example that could be followed. If he does everything as God, I'm impressed, but I can't follow it. I'm I'm an observer. But when I find that what he's done, he's done as a man, R.T. Kendall puts it this way. He says, Jesus was entirely God as though he were not man at all, and he was entirely man as though he were not God at all. It's one of the the most mind-boggling mysteries there is. So Jesus came to earth with authority because he was commissioned. Our authority is in equal measure to our yes to his mission. We don't have authority to use randomly for personal uh, vindication, uh, promotion, any of those things. Our authority has been given specifically to enable us to carry out his mission, which is to make disciples, to raise up disciples in nations and literally to disciple nations. So when Jesus comes before his disciples, he commissions them, therefore giving them authority. But in Luke 24, he said, don't leave Jerusalem until you're clothed with power. 
So the point was, is while they were following Jesus in their, in their three and a half years of mentorship, discipleship by Jesus, they were able to function under his um, umbrella of authority and power. But when Jesus left, they had to get their own. And so in the commission, they were given authority. But then he said, don't leave Jerusalem until you're clothed with power. Authority comes in the commission. Power comes in the encounter. Power comes in the encounter. When Jesus was baptized in water, the Holy Spirit came upon him in the form of a dove. He is recorded to have walked in authority from that point on. He goes from that water baptism into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The devil comes to him. The first question was, has God said, or excuse me, if you're the son of God, turn this stone into bread. What was the last thing Jesus heard from the father in that storyline? The father said, you are my beloved son. So the devil comes and says, if. So the whole deal is to question identity and to question what God has said. It's the two, um, can I say the two, uh, uh, the, the, um, the themes running deep in every temptation is either to question what God has said or to question who we are. And if you get those two things settled, Nothing else is appealing. Nothing, nothing outside of God's purpose is attractive if you know who you are and what God has said. Right. Power is to right what is wrong. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is to put power upon the people of God. Number one for miracles. Without power, this is not good news. It's not a philosophy to inspire. It's a relationship with the almighty one who paid a tremendous price to make it possible for us to taste of freedom and liberty. Freedom from addictions, from uh, afflictions, all, all sorts of stuff, demonic stuff. He, he paid a tremendous price so that we would taste now, not just in heaven. The promises made were not just made so that we would enjoy, you know, freedom and liberty in heaven. He actually makes it available now. That's why he said the kingdom is at hand. It's within reach now. So Jesus commissions his disciples and he says, uh, disciple nations, but wait till you're clothed with power. So in that context, there is, this, there is this element of power and authority that rests on the church. Here's what I want to talk about tonight. Um, authority, authority, Authority has to be used for justice or it's not properly used. The Bible teaches us, Psalms 97 says that um, righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Justice Contending for justice is a huge part of what it means to exercise the authority that God's given to us. And here's, here's the, the most challenging part of this is justice begins by protecting and defending those who have no voice. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really searching for words uh, here, here tonight, trying to, uh, trying to, trying to stir up something in, in us as a people. The most obvious, perhaps, would be the unborn. They have no voice. They can't speak for themselves. And justice is actually to put yourself at risk to defend those who can't fight for themselves. Um, let me read just some random verses for you that I've, I've got to print uh, or put on my iPad. It says, um, Isaiah 117 says, learn to do good, seek justice, reprove the ruthless, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Justice targets those who really don't either have the position in life, 
the strength, sometimes just the voice, to defend themselves. And authority in the kingdom is not just to cast out devils, which thankfully I'm, I'm glad that that's our privilege and assignment. But sometimes it becomes very, very practical where we see people that have been abused, they've been taken advantage of. And they've suffered so many different things in life and they need someone to stand up for them because they cannot speak for themselves. Uh, Proverbs 24, 11 and 12 says, deliver those who are being taken away to death and those who are staggering to slaughter or hold them back. If you say, see, we did not know this, does not... Does, not, uh, does he not consider it who weighs the heart? And does he not know it who keeps your soul? Will he not render man according to his work? What he's saying, you, say, you, you can't say, we didn't know they couldn't speak for themselves and do nothing. Because if you actually saw, for example, the unborn and you say nothing, then your silence in that moment is a misuse of authority. Authority is not to punish and destroy people. Authority is to defend those who are in, in need. And it's the widow, it's the orphan, it's the unborn. In some cultures, it's certain races have such a harder time just making it in life and standing on behalf of group people groups to protect and defend and to, to promote and to work to give opportunity. It's our responsibility. It's the biblical use of authority is to make sure that people have opportunity to thrive and to be liberated in life. Wow. Jeremiah 22, three says, thus says the Lord do justice and righteousness, deliver the one who has been robbed from the power of his oppressor do not mistreat or do violence to the stranger, to the orphan, or the widow. Do not shed innocent blood. Um, this troubles me. Um, I watch powerful people treat non-powerful people with sometimes, sometimes it's out and out disgust, but not usually. It's usually indifference. It's usually indifference. It's usually uh, when it's done improperly. Because um, so many of you, I, I, I watch you rally to the people that are in greatest crisis and need. But when it's done improperly, it's usually indifference because they don't have the, well, as James would say, they come in, they don't have the gold ring, they don't have whatever the nice clothes. And so they're put off to the side and yet there's great value for certain classes or certain groups of people. I don't see that a lot here and I'm thankful for it, but I, I did see it today. And it really troubled me when I saw it. I saw, I just saw someone who just kind of put aside that, uh, that just doesn't have that much going on for them in life uh, by someone who did. And uh, when I see that, it just, it hurts so bad because that's, it's, it's an improper use of authority. See, if, if I use my position, here's the deal. We are called priests of the Lord. We represent God before people and people before God. I represent people before God in prayer, in intercession. I'm praying on behalf of. I represent God before people, trying to bring the best I can, his love, his word, his touch, everything I can. If I misuse that and I, I uh, point the finger, we sang a song tonight about clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands are no pointing fingers. Hands that don't accuse. If I, if I accuse people before the Lord, I am misusing my position as a priest and he will then, instead of, instead of attending to the concern that I have, that I have put in accusation form, instead of attending to my concern, he now rises up to defend them against me because I'm misusing my authority. Amen. Authority is supposed to be used for their benefit. Our authority is never used for self-promotion. It's never used for vindication. Anything you obtain through self-promotion, you have to sustain through self-promotion. It's like a, a beach ball with a leak in it. You have to keep pumping the, the air in to keep the thing alive. And it's, it's a disgusting way to do life. 
We've had, uh, well, let me read some more verses and then I'll. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of the unfortunate. Proverbs 31, verse 8. Um, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Amos 5 24. How blessed are those who keep justice, who practice righteousness at all times. What I want you to see is these two terms justice rights a wrong, righteousness is what you build with. Um, picture it this way. A nation, a holy nation, the people of God have been commissioned to disciple nations. How do you disciple a nation? You don't just point to what's broken and wrong. You actually lead the nation into building something where communities thrive, businesses thrive, families are healthy, education is strong, science, medicine, all these things are healthy. That's what it is to disciple. You actually take them into something that's positive. So what, what, what this uh, means is justice gets us out of the red, righteousness brings us into the black. Does that make any sense? In culture and society, the authority we've been given for the area of justice, specifically justice and righteousness, is to bring them out of the red. In other words, fix the stuff that's broken. Deal with the, those who have been disadvantaged, those who have been uh, abused, those who have been rejected, and all, all the stuff that goes on in life. Get them out of the red, but then righteousness takes them into a lifestyle where they get to experience what they were designed for. It's all a part of the authority that we've been given. In recent days, we've had uh, so many reports of tragedies among great leaders and uh, failures and stuff. And I, I remember when this happened back in the 80s, we had just a series of national crises that hit the church. And, and we were faced with the same dilemma that we have today. And I, I just, I, I'm, so, I, I'm so troubled by it, first of all, uh, because sin is so unnecessary. And, uh, and to see, uh, see what happens to people. First of all, when, when you give yourself to justice, the first thing you have to do is give attention to the victims. The first thing you do is give attention to victims. Victims don't need you to fix them. Most of the time, a victim needs a friend, an ear, somebody that will listen. Honoring them enough to listen to their story. And if you're like me, I'm, I, I've been in working with people for so many years, even, even after this many years, my first response is still to try to fix something instead of realizing most of the time what people need is a friend. They need somebody, in my case, somebody in authority who actually just will pay attention to them and listen, have value for their experience, have value for their for. for for what they've kept secret. I just, I, I just had a, a connection with uh, somebody who, who just had horrible, horrible experiences just recently and spent a, a couple hours, hour and a half, couple hours just listening to their story and just, to be honest, just apologizing on behalf of spiritual leaders, spiritual fathers. Forgive us for, for really, uh, you know, taking... I, I didn't take advantage of her. I didn't do anything improper. But just sometimes you stand in that place and you say, just forgive us. Those of us who are in these positions like this, uh, I am so sorry that you, that, wow. you, that you not only were abused, but I'm so sorry those that you sent the signal out to didn't respond and didn't care for you. And it's, this is what authority does. Authority is never used for for ourselves. It's never used to say, well, I'm right and you're wrong. It's not a position to say, all right, uh, yeah, you're, you're just bitter or whatever. You know what? There could even be bitterness, but let's get the reason they're broken first, healed. And, uh, and I, I, I believe everybody needs to walk in forgiveness. I get that. But this issue of authority is actually to bring people into wholeness. It, it is not to establish your great ministry. It is to bring people into wholeness, and that requires justice and righteousness. <clears throat> There's a couple more verses I'll read, and then, uh, and then I'm going to just preach. No, <laughs> Pro probably not, probably not. Some of you got your hopes up. You were, you were hoping. <clears throat> it's interesting, in Hosea 2.9, it says, um, I will betroth you to me forever. 
Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice, in loving kindness and in compassion. Just think about that. I will betroth you. Here's the Lord saying to the people of God, I will betroth you to me forever in righteousness and justice. Even in the intimacy of a relationship with the Almighty God, he has woven the theme of justice, of righteousness into that relationship. Wow. The willingness, some, I, I, I believe this is prophetic, so I'll just throw it out and you, you do with it what you want. I think some in this room who have needed great, great breakthrough won't have it until you stand up for somebody who's hurting. It's, it's in the posture of protection, using what authority you have to protect and defend and to stand up for them. Stand up for the rights of the person. Sometimes you, you, you work in, a, in a, a place, and you've seen it, I'm sure, as, as I have, where there are just certain individuals, they just get picked on a lot. And it's almost like they have a target on them. I've, I've watched it for years. They just get... It's not because they're weird. It's not because they did anything wrong. It's not because they don't, aren't good workers or whatever. They just seem to attract that stuff. And I, I personally think it's just a demonic thing to isolate them and to, and to really, uh, uh, for them to live under that, that thing of rejection and stuff. And where authority comes is where you come and stand alongside of that individual, where you, you not only uh, become a friend, but you speak words of affirmation, encouragement, bring them out of that cycle. I think we have the authority to break the cycle to break the cycle. I, I watched this for a number of years. If I, I, I would have uh, like a business person, oh, and I'm going to get phone calls. I'm going to get invitations for lunch. I can feel it coming right now. <laughs> Do not call me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but I watched for years. If I would take time with a certain uh, individual or businessman or whatever, we would have lunch together, we'd share, and there would be this prayer for their personal breakthrough. Something would happen one guy, whenever I had lunch with him, he'd go back to work and get a raise. And it, it, was, it, it was, yeah, yeah, you want lunch now. Yeah. Let's, let's just eat right now. Just eat right now. This is it. All of you get a raise. All right. I, 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 know, that, I, know, that sounds, I know that sounds strange. I know that sounds strange, but, but follow, follow this biblical concept. In Ephesians 4, it says, Let no unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification, according to the need of the moment, listen to this, that it might give grace to those who hear. What is grace? Grace is divine favor. And here he says, don't speak words of, of death, speak words of life. Pick somebody, bring an encouraging effort affirming word to them according to the situation they're in and God will add his touch of grace on what you've just said. You can break cycles in people's lives by just selecting them, just selecting them, just taking time with them, just taking time to listen. You'd rather be with this exciting friend and with that exciting friend, but sometimes it's just looking into their eyes and taking just a few moments just that with that one individual that breaks a cycle of collapse where the enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy for so long. And every person in this room has the capacity for this. I realize that there are some things that have to be dealt with with spiritual authority in the body of Christ. I get that, and that's, that's needed right now. I, 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 I hear the cry for that right now. But a lot of things can be taken care of by a friend that just stands in there to listen, to hear, to pray, to support. Be slow to give answers. Be slow to give counsel. Be quick to listen. Be quick to love. Be quick to embrace. And, and let's watch and see what happens. I believe that the Lord is going to elevate the the. Uh, the realization or the felt uh, impact of authority on the body of Christ in this season. It looks like the opposite is happening. But to me, that's an indication of what God wants to heal in us. Something, a course correction that he wants to, to do for us to where we, we are looking for those who need just that extra attention, that extra word, that extra moment, that extra prayer, the willingness to listen to their stuff without, without unloading on them. And listening to their stuff and just help, helping them to stay in a place where they're, where they're healthy. Stay in a place where they're connected to people. I remind you that the disciples belonged before they believed. 
It's one of the most extraordinary things is they actually belong. They were a part of this community of 12 and Jesus, 13. So there's this community, the small community, they belong before, before, they, knew, before they knew who he was. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm thinking if I'm putting together a group of 12 guys I'm going to put out a questionnaire. 10,000 people can apply for this position. At the top of the list, do you believe Jesus is the Messiah? Number one question. You, you, you can't be a part of this group if you don't believe he's the Messiah. But Jesus didn't start that way. He just spoke. He said, follow me. And there was something in his voice that made them curious enough to leave family, to leave jobs, to leave everything, to be with this guy. And they didn't even know who he was. But there was something there. They belonged. And our our intentionality to help people to belong. I don't mean that we accept, you know, the 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 sins and the all that. I, I don't I, I don't I don't like that. I know that there's so much junk going on in people's lives right now that are just trying to say, well, the grace of God covers it. No, no, grace is to get you out of it. It's not to it's not to keep you safe in it. So. Uh, I, maybe I will preach. No, I'm, no, I'm, no, 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 stop, stop. The raises, you want to talk about the raises? <laughs> let's, let's, let's get down to the important stuff, the, the increase in income and all that. Yeah. Um, I, let, let me just dabble for a minute and... and How you relate to people. Here's what fathers do. Fathers and mothers, all right. Fathers bring identity, purpose, destiny, and a consciousness of unlimited resource. You didn't know the last one. But that's what our father does, which means that's what this father and this father and this mother are supposed to do. To do that, you have to live conscious of a world that is superior to this one. We actually are seated in heavenly places. It's not just a point of theology to encourage us. It's actually a place of seeing. It's a place of thinking. It's a, it's a, it's a reality that shifts how we think and how we perceive what we're facing. When you're in that position, you can actually increase the bounty and the blessing in other people's lives. I don't mean that you and I fix and repair everything. I just mean that there's, there's, something, there's something about the favor of God on a person's life that benefits everybody under their influence. And it's, it's just a fact. You know, I, I remind you of this part of the story often with Solomon where the Queen of Sheba, in fact, it was spoken to him twice but the queen of Sheba was one of them. She said to Solomon, God has highly favored you because of his love for Israel. Think about that statement. He has highly favored you because he loves the people around you. In other words, the favor is not for you. The favor is to equip you to be a resource for the people that you influence. And when we use the favor, can I use the word now authority, when we use these things for ourselves, then we, we cut off the flow and we, we not only cheapen what God is doing in the earth, we actually restrict our own personal development. Much more would flow through us if we realize the position that God's put us in to be a, a people of resource, people of strength. Uh, you know, we, we, we don't have to have... Be quick to give counsel on answers. We need to listen. But there are times where you just speak those life-giving words. Sometimes it's a sentence that changes a person's life. Yes. I've watched this for so many years, just stepping into a person's life for a moment can change anything and everything. And everybody in this room has been given authority and power for that. So power and authority is what every believer has to walk in to accurately demonstrate our Heavenly Father, who He is, what He is like. Power confronts the stuff that's wrong. The second part of power, I don't think I mentioned that I should have, is there's two parts of power in, 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 uh, in the book of Acts. Power is for the miracle, but power also enables one to endure until the miracle comes. The dunamis power of God 
enables, graces a person to endure through hardship. You see extraordinary miracles in the gospel, extraordinary miracles in the book of Acts. But you all see, also see crazy, crazy endurance. The power of God that was on Stephen as he's martyred. It's just bizarre. I'm not prophesying to you. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying that power element is so huge that walking in the power of the Lord, yielded to the power of the Lord, is so huge because then nothing is impossible. But it's not just the demonstration of power. I, 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 uh, I don't know that I ever thought through this, but I, I know that in my lifestyle, I lean towards the demonstration of power more than the demonstration of authority. I know there have been seasons in my life where I would lean towards the demonstration of power more than authority. And I'm, I'm just saying, again, I, I never would have said that out loud because it wasn't conscious. But I'm saying now the release of authority is absolutely critical and vital. Yes. Power starts the revival. Authority sustains it. Yes. It's, what, it's knowing how to live in the justice of the Lord gives a credibility to the work of the Spirit of God to where people become whole. And all of us are, in the, all of us are broken. Yes. I don't know if you noticed that. I'm here to give you good news. All of us, all of us have issues and, and Jesus is working on every one of us and, uh, and walking in that kind of authority, standing up for those. I, I forgot to mention when there's a crisis like we have going uh, right now, we have to give attention to victims. Number one, number two, we've got to give attention to those who it's, it's almost like the collateral damage. You know, you've got, you've got, let's say, let's say you've got a woman, but then they've got a sister and they've got a brother and they've got a cousin. There's this collateral damage that happens and we've got to listen to them too. We've got to pay attention to them too. And then finally, and this is the one that bothers the most people, is, uh, is you've got to give attention to the victimizer. I was going to read... I was going to read the entire chapter of Isaiah 61. Man, I missed it completely. So let me just quote one, one part of the, of the passage. Actually, that's what I was going to study tonight. I don't know what happened. I just got rambling. Just got talking. He, Jesus announces, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And he, he describes what he's going to be doing in his ministry. And what's interesting, he said to give recovery of sight to blind, he, he makes these decrees before any miracles happened. He declared it before he did it. He declared it before he did it. It's, it's not hard to declare it after you've done it. Some of you will do more if you'll declare more. Thank you. I, I, was, I was trying hard. I was trying hard. All right, let me get land this thing. Um, this, in, in this passage, Jesus says that he's going to set captives free and he's going to set prisoners free. There's a difference between these two groups. Captives are those who are imprisoned because of what was done to them. Prisoners are captive because of what they did. Are, are you with me? So in this room, there are people who are captive because of something that was done to you. A stepfather abused you. Captive. Jesus came to set that person free. But then there's people in here that you're bound, you know, because of something you did. It was you were the one. You were the, you know, not the victim. You were the victimizer. You were the one who, who, who gave the abuse. And he's here to set you free too. And the wonderful thing about our father, now we got to take this in sequence. It's what's important is we work with the victims. We work with the fallout in family and friends, but we don't ignore the victimizer because that's the part of the gospel that makes this thing go full circle because then you've got like an apostle Paul who was responsible for the martyrdom, for the death of Stephen comes full circle. He is now the great proponent of the gospel. And uh, so we need that kind of hope regardless of what situation you're in. All right, I've rambled long enough. I don't understand. Yeah, all right. I, <laughs> I had such good plans, you know, such good plans. I, I apologize for not, uh, I did read some scripture to you, so that helps, but, uh, but.
But uh, yeah, righteousness, righteousness and justice, righteousness and justice. Oh, man, this has been a long day. <laughs> How many of our, uh, our visitors here for the conference, you fly home tomorrow? Extend a hand towards these. Look at all of them. They're flying home tomorrow and they're here late tonight. Extend a hand towards them. Bless them. Just do it right now. Extend a hand. Start praying for them. Safe travels. Let them take home more than they thought was possible. Let them take home more than they thought was ever possible. Let a spirit of breakthrough rest upon them, each one of them. Spirit of breakthrough. Every pastor, every leader. Carry the wisdom of God, the presence, the power of the Lord into your church, into your city. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amazing. Can we just give Pastor Bill another big thank you for tonight? So, so good. Wow. How many of you were just blessed by that message tonight? So, so good. Thank you, Pastor Bill, for sharing about just what we walk in with him, his power and his authority on our lives. So, so grateful. Um, before we just move on, he was talking about just the power of just even stopping and, and hearing someone's story and looking at them in their eyes. And I thought, let's just take a moment. Why don't you just close your eyes for a second and just ask the Lord if there's someone, maybe it's a neighbor, maybe it's your children, <laughs> maybe it's a spouse, to be able to take some time to hear someone's story, to look in their eyes, to be Jesus to them. That we would be a church that would love well. Just take a moment, why don't you just ask him, who's someone that comes to mind? Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yeah, we thank you for these people. And God, I pray that we would, in the middle, in the midst of busyness and, and seasons, God, that we would remember to see people and to love them well, the way that you do that with us, <laughs> that now we would do that with the world, with our neighbors, with our kids. We wanna reflect your heart to this world, Jesus. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we already saw so many people getting healed tonight, which is a huge praise, amen? Come on, that is a huge praise. God is healing. That's amazing. Well, I would like to invite the ministry team forward to come. And if you have any specific need tonight, physically, emotionally, whatever it is, or you wanna stand in the gap for someone else, we would love for you to make your way. Once the ministry team comes forward, if you can go ahead and come on forward, first, second, third year students, some alumni, ministry team. And then um, ministry team, if you'll raise your hand, please. And if you see a hand raised, you can go ahead and make your way up and they would love to pray for you. Anything is possible tonight. Anything is possible because we have a God that can do the impossible, amen. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, have a wonderful night. Thanks so much for those that came for the prophetic conference. We pray that you are just blessed to overflowing in Jesus' name. Bless you guys. Go ahead and